In an intense moment in the living room, I couldn't help but express my frustration. Why are you even in this house? You're just like a parasite living off of us, I blurted out. No sooner had the words escaped my lips than my mother-in-law began hurling my belongings out the window. I tried to reason with her, asking, What did you just say? Don't you dare throw my things out? Ignoring my protest, she aggressively told me not to talk back and shockingly held a knife to my throat, threatening me with a chilling ultimatum, leave or this won't just be a threat. Terrified, I agreed to leave immediately, managing to say, I understand, I'll go. Even as I tried to hide my fear, she coldly granted me a week to pack up and leave. Despite the fear, I couldn't help but feel a sense of irony. She didn't know that I was the main financial support for the household. My amusement was hidden behind a polite facade as I prepared to leave, believing that my departure might finally bring some peace back to the household. After moving out, I settled into a high-rise apartment and continued working from home. Reflecting on the past, I recalled the day six years ago when I married Anthony, filled with hopes of a peaceful and loving future. However, life took a sharp turn when Anthony was severely injured at a construction site, losing most of the functionality in his dominant arm. I was devastated crying in the hospital room when my mother-in-law arrived, oblivious to my distress. She suggested that Anthony move back with her, surprising me with her abrupt proposal. When I expressed my shock, she dismissively asked if I had a problem with that. I responded, slightly irritated. It's not that, it's just so sudden. But Anthony defended me, saying, Carol has been supportive all this time and I trust her completely. Although his mother seemed displeased, Anthony's words reassured me of his trust and appreciation for my efforts. My mother-in-law made a barely audible sound of disapproval, but I knew that with time she would come to understand everything I had done for the family. As I settled into my new life, I hoped that eventually the truth of my contributions would come to light, but by then it might be too late for any reconciliation. Despite her attempts, she couldn't dampen my resolve. As soon as you're out of the hospital, come straight to the house. You're always welcome here, Carol, she said as if my inclusion was obvious. I had a pretty good idea of what might unfold if my mother-in-law took control. Carol, I'm leaving all the moving plans to you. Everything, she declared casually. That's too much for one person, Mom. Please help her out, my husband interjected, hoping she would lend a hand. However, my mother-in-law seemed uninterested in assisting and disregarded his request. I have my matters to attend to, she retorted with a smirk, thinking my husband hadn't noticed her dismissive attitude. It cast a shadow over what was to come. A month later, my husband was ready to leave the hospital, and amid the chaos of moving, the responsibility of picking him up fell to my mother-in-law. When she confronted me, Her tone was accusatory. Aren't you finished yet? Today was Anthony's discharge day, and you weren't there to pick him up. I tried to explain, you see, Anthony, but he cut me off, echoing his mother. See, she only thinks about herself. Her strategy was clear. She wanted to paint me in a bad light in front of my husband. I chose not to engage with her provocation. Despite this, my husband gave me a look of warmth and understanding. Come on, Mom. Stop. This isn't helping, he chided her. Well, no one asked you to wait, I thought to myself, watching the almost comical scene of my mother-in-law chasing after my husband. When she realized I was watching, she shot me a menacing glare, which I brushed off effortlessly. Anthony, you can just take it easy at home from now on, I suggested gently. That's impossible. My right hand might not be fully functional, but I don't want to be a burden on Carol, he insisted. I understand, but you've just been discharged. It's okay to take it slow. However, Anthony was firm in his resolve. Initially, I had hoped he would take some time to relax and recover, but seeing his determination, I decided to support his wishes wholeheartedly. Starting with some light cleaning could be a good way for you to ease back into things, 
Considering your condition, I suggested, thinking it might help with his rehabilitation. That sounds reasonable. I'm unsure if my hand will fully recover, but it's better than sitting idle. Just promise me you won't overdo it, he replied, half joking that he didn't want to risk my wrath, which he found rather daunting. Anthony went about his tasks cheerfully, downplaying his discomfort to keep me from worrying. Inspired by his courage, I vowed to push myself harder for both our sakes. Yet, I hadn't accounted for one obstacle. My mother-in-law, whose sudden interruption took me by surprise. Carol, wait a minute. What's going on here? Why is Anthony cleaning? You must have forced him into it, she accused without waiting for an explanation. She had a knack for making snap judgments based solely on appearances, often missing the deeper context. Dealing with her was always a challenge. You're always holed up in your room just messing around. With your husband seriously injured, you should be. She continued to berate me. I'm working. It's called remote work, and it's quite common these days, I corrected her. But she dismissed it. I've had enough of that excuse, she retorted sharply. Just then, in a fit of irritation, she grabbed a nearby trash can and threw it in my direction. Thankfully, it didn't hit me directly, but trash was scattered everywhere. Exhausted by the confrontation, I decided it was futile to explain any further. Her mind was made up, and she wasn't listening. This mess is disgusting. Clean it up yourself, she demanded as I began picking up the scattered trash. Anthony, who had just entered the room, noticed the commotion. Hey, what happened here? He asked, looking concerned. It's just a small incident, I replied, forcing a smile to downplay the situation. But Anthony, usually so calm, showed a flash of insight. Did mom do something? Are you hiding something? Please be honest with me, he pressed, his expression serious. Seeing his genuine concern, I felt compelled to tell him the truth about what had transpired. Got it. I'll talk to mom about this, he said firmly after hearing me out. Oh, it's fine, really, but it's not okay. I'll handle this, he insisted, determined to address the issue. Relieved and grateful for his support, I realized how important it was to have him by my side, not just as my partner, but as someone who truly understood the challenges we faced together. Lying in bed, my gaze fixed on the ceiling, I worried about the repercussions of today's events. Inevitably, I feared I would end up being blamed. As the evening shadows grew longer, my thoughts kept circling back to the day's conflicts. Night fell, and I replayed the conversation in my head. Carol was just messing around, someone had commented. But that wasn't true. I had been diligently working, even taking on extra tasks. Why were you cleaning then? The question had come up earlier. I offered to do it. I can't just sit idle at home, especially not after just being discharged from the hospital. I know what I'm capable of. Anthony had responded, his stern words cutting through the air, leaving his mother momentarily speechless. Perhaps she hadn't expected such firmness from him, dismissing her assumptions as mere arrogance. I had hoped this clear stance from Anthony would give his mother some pause for thought. The following day, as Anthony left for a rehabilitation session, I found myself alone with my mother-in-law. I was busy in my room when she appeared at the door. Can we talk? She asked. Can it wait about 20 minutes? I responded, hoping to finish up my work. No, I can't wait. Come now, she insisted. I quickly wrapped up and headed to the living room, where to my surprise, an unknown woman was waiting. Excuse me, who is this? I asked, feeling uneasy. Have a seat first. We'll talk after that, my mother-in-law commanded, her tone leaving no room for objection. As I sat down, trying to make sense of the situation, the woman began speaking. So, this is the one you were talking about? The wife who just plays around without working? Yes, it's true, my mother-in-law replied, her laugh sending chills down my spine. You realize that you're an unnecessary presence in this house, don't you? The woman challenged me directly. What are you talking about? I asked, looking around in confusion and distress. Don't you understand? Unnecessary people are not needed here, she continued, 
her words growing increasingly harsh. What do you mean? I countered, the situation becoming more perplexing by the second. They bombarded me with accusations of incompetence, each assertion more taxing on my mental state than the last. Isn't it time you realize your place? How dare a daughter-in-law toy with her mother-in-law spending time on such unproductive things? Isn't it a waste of time? My mother-in-law taunted. Reaching my breaking point, I felt overwhelmed by the nerve of these accusations. The tension in the room was stifling, pushing me to the edge of my patience. In the tense atmosphere of the living room, as my mother-in-law's anger seemed to intensify, a quick idea sparked in my mind. Oh, isn't it about time for Anthony to return from his rehabilitation session? I casually mentioned, glancing at the clock as if expecting him any moment. Is it that time already? My mother-in-law reacted, taken aback. Just then, the unknown woman, sensing perhaps that her presence was no longer appropriate, made a quick exit. I'll come again soon, okay? We'll talk more then, she said as she hurried out. Let's, my mother-in-law responded, clearly fooled by my feigned ignorance. In reality, Anthony wouldn't be back for another hour, but the moment seemed ripe for some relief from the tension. By the way, who was that woman? I finally voiced the question that had been nagging at me since the stranger had arrived. That's Patricia, a close friend of mine. She was eager to meet you after hearing so much about you, she explained nonchalantly. It wasn't hard to imagine the sort of things Patricia had been told, likely painting me as some frivolous wife who shirked her responsibilities. This assumption seemed to be the only thing my mother-in-law cherished sharing about me. So, that's the case. Well, Anthony will be back a bit later. I need to get back to my work now, I said, attempting to leave the room. Wait, what do you mean? Just as you said, he's not coming back yet. You lied! she realized, her tone accusatory. Why do you act like this? I seized the opportunity to finally speak my mind. Her continuous interference had become too much of a nuisance. You're the one who started this, right? You called your friend because you can't handle things by yourself, I challenged her. That's not true. I can manage you perfectly fine on my own, she retorted defiantly. Then why don't you try and see if you really can? I provoked her further, hoping it might lead her to reconsider her tactics. As expected, her response was heated. If you want to apologize, now is the time. I have no such intention, I declared firmly. In response, she exploded in anger, grabbing a nearby vase and hurling it towards me. I had anticipated her reaction and dodged it effortlessly, even managing to flash a provocative smile. Hello, I'm home. Anthony's voice suddenly echoed from the entrance, catching us both off guard. Why are you home already? It's not time yet, my mother-in-law stammered, visibly shaken. Oh, I lied earlier. I was actually on my way back, Anthony admitted. He looked from the shattered vase to the tense faces, quickly piecing together the situation. Why would you do that? His mother asked, bewildered. Isn't it obvious? I pointed to the remnants of the vase on the floor, signaling the chaos that had unfolded in his absence. It was a clear illustration of the underlying tensions that needed to be addressed. Despite the tense atmosphere, I couldn't help but find a hint of humor in the chaos. Hey, what happened here? Anthony asked as he walked in, surveying the mess. Your mom threw that vase at me. I explained, still a bit shocked by her actions. What? You mean that lady who came over claiming to be mom's friend? Anthony looked between me and his mother, his expression a mix of surprise and anger. Is that true, mom? He asked. She hesitated, then muttered a reluctant, Well? So it's true. Why would you do that? His voice carried a weight of disappointment and disbelief. Witnessing my mother-in-law being reprimanded, I felt a sense of vindication for all the troubles I'd endured under her roof. Well, I have something to do, she said, trying to escape the conversation. Okay, wait, she started, but I wasn't in the mood to linger on her excuses. I turned away and headed back to my room, hoping this episode might finally put an end to her bullying tactics. 
For a while, life seemed to return to a calm normalcy. But after staying up late one night, I had dozed off well past noon. I was woken by Anthony's voice. Sorry to wake you, but can you come here for a moment? Okay, sure, I replied, noticing his unusually serious demeanor. In the living room, my mother-in-law was already there, looking oddly complacent. What's going on? I asked. Look at this, Anthony said, pointing to the table where a disassembled plastic model was scattered about. It was one of his treasured hobbies, usually kept pristine. I came home and found it like this. Do you know anything about it? He inquired. No, I have no clue, I replied, genuinely puzzled. I hadn't been near the room where the model was kept, let alone inside it. My gaze drifted involuntarily towards my mother-in-law, who wore a strange, eerie smile, as if pleased by the disruption. Even if someone broke it, I was out. I met Anthony on my way back from Patricia's place, remember? She quickly interjected, trying to deflect suspicion. Yes, but... Anthony began his voice trailing off as he noticed something in her hand. She was holding a shiny object. Is that an earring? I instinctively touched my ears and realized my left earring was missing. It didn't take long for me to connect the dots. This had to be an act of revenge for the previous incident. This is yours, isn't it? It looks like only the left one is missing, she accused, her voice tinged with triumph. I took a deep breath, knowing that showing anger would only play into her narrative. Indeed, it's mine. But isn't it premature to conclude that I broke the model? Jumping to conclusions and making accusations without proof is unbecoming. We have evidence, she insisted smugly. But I knew better than to let the situation escalate based on her manipulations. The atmosphere thickened with tension as Anthony left the room abruptly leaving me alone under the scrutinous gaze of my mother-in-law. Her stare felt accusing as if she believed I was guilty of some heinous act. Stunned, I stood there silently. It's a shame, she began, her voice dripping with faux sympathy. This could have been the end of you if you had done it. You set a trap, didn't you? You'll find no evidence anywhere. If only you had followed my advice, none of this would have happened. Her insinuations felt like a noose tightening around my neck. She seemed to be weaving a narrative that painted me as the culprit, regardless of the truth. If I just explain things to him properly, he'll understand, right? I pondered aloud, more to reassure myself than to seek her agreement. But her response was cold and calculating. Will he? No matter how much you insist it wasn't your fault, he won't take you seriously, she declared as if her words were the final judgment. Wait, I haven't done anything wrong, I protested, but Anthony, who had just returned, avoided my gaze, his actions echoing his doubt. Laughter echoed from behind us and my mother-in-law taunted, See, I told you so. What does that matter now? Sadly, you don't want to admit defeat. Feeling isolated and misunderstood, I buried myself in my work, using it as an escape from the unsettling reality at home. Conversations with Anthony grew sparse, and as days turned into weeks, my mother-in-law seemed increasingly content with the discord she had sown. You seem down lately. Is there something troubling you? She prodded one day, a smug smile on her face. There's no need for you to worry. Please stop. I replied, exhausted by her games. It's too late for that. Acting tough is useless, she retorted, clearly enjoying my discomfort. On a particularly tense day, her good mood was palpable, a bad omen that soon manifested into a dire situation. While I was cleaning, she confronted me aggressively. Why are you even in this house? You're like a parasite living off of us here. Taken aback by her sudden hostility, I responded, What's gotten into you all of a sudden? You always talk back, such a noisy daughter-in-law, echoing her own words back at her. She reacted by throwing my belongings out of the window. What are you doing? I protested, shocked by her irrational behavior. You're too noisy, always talking back, she snapped. Can you pick my stuff up, please? I pleaded, 
hoping to reason with her somehow. But as I spoke, she pressed a knife to my throat, paralyzing me with fear. It's better if you stay still. A normal person wouldn't do this, I managed to say, despite the terror gripping me. My mother-in-law's eyes flashed dangerously. If you don't leave now, next time it won't just be a joke, she threatened. Understanding the gravity of the situation, I whispered, I understand. I'll leave. Realizing that any further argument was futile and potentially dangerous. As I acknowledged my mother-in-law's ultimatum, I couldn't help but feel a bittersweet relief. You have a week. Leave before then, she commanded sharply. It was clear that staying any longer would only entangle me further in her delusions. Unbeknownst to her, she had been living comfortably thanks to the support I provided, yet she remained blissfully ignorant of the true dynamics of our household. Pack up quickly, she ordered. I nodded, a fleeting smile crossing my face as I bowed my head, careful not to let her catch any hint of my true feelings. This will bring peace back to our home. I'm so happy, she remarked, her joy evident. However, I knew her happiness would be short-lived once she realized the extent of what she had set in motion. That night, after she had retired, I took the opportunity to discuss the situation with Anthony. I see, so it has come to this, he acknowledged, his tone serious. I have something to tell you, too, he added, piquing my curiosity. What is it? I asked, surprised. We'll talk about it later, he assured me, calming my immediate concerns. Five days later, I had found a new place to live, and the week my mother-in-law had given me was nearly up. Well, today's the day of the promise, you understand, right? I confirmed with Anthony. Yes, the movers are scheduled to arrive soon, he replied. I wondered about his whereabouts since he had been out since the morning, but dismissed the concern. Never mind, the thought of not having to see your face anymore is enough. I'm going out now. Make sure everything's clean, I told my mother-in-law, forcing a smile. An hour later, the moving company arrived and we loaded all my belongings. I contacted Anthony. All packed up. Got it. Just make sure you get there safely, okay? See you later, he responded, ending the call. I was buzzing with anticipation about her reaction once she discovered the full extent of the situation. Finally, as the move was completed, my mother-in-law's confusion turned to panic. What have you done? Anthony's belongings are nowhere to be found, she exclaimed in disbelief. Of course we moved out together. Do you want to check with him? I offered casually, pulling out my phone and switching it to speaker handing it to her as she struggled to grasp the unfolding events. Anthony confirmed our joint plan over the phone, leaving my mother-in-law completely bewildered. This was my plan all along, Mom, I admitted, no longer holding back. Anthony, what's happening? Tell me, she pleaded, desperate for answers. Actually, about the model kit incident, Anthony began, ready to reveal everything. Anthony faced his mother with a finality that brooked no argument. We know that you did it, he declared, effectively silencing her protests. There's no way Carol would do such a thing, he continued, defending me with unwavering certainty. Why do you think that? His mother managed to ask, her voice tinged with confusion and disbelief. Because it was a gift from Carol, she wouldn't break it on purpose. Anthony explained logically, demonstrating his faith in my character. Faced with this reasoning, my mother-in-law was left speechless, forced to confront the fact that she had wronged the very person who had been supporting her all this while. Well then, you'll have to manage on your own from here on out, Anthony concluded firmly. But I don't work. If you two leave me, she stammered, finally grasping the full implications of her actions. That's the choice you made, she said, resigning herself to the consequences. Mom, it's no longer our business. It's time for each of us to do our best. Anthony remarked, effectively ending the conversation. We felt a profound sense of relief. Though we had initially hoped for a good relationship with her, we had quickly abandoned that hope. Now, my mother-in-law had chosen her fate. But why did you keep it a secret? I asked Anthony later, curious about his earlier reticence. About that? What about Mom? It's like they say, deceive your allies to deceive your enemy. 
Anthony explained with a slight grin. You can't mean enemy, I said in disbelief, but the humor of the situation wasn't lost on us. We looked at each other and burst out laughing, relieved that we could finally look forward to a peaceful life together. About a month later, Anthony seemed contemplative. You seem down lately. Is there something troubling you? He asked, his concern evident. There's no need for you to worry. Please stop, I reassured him, trying to alleviate his concern with a light tone. It's too late for that. Acting tough is useless, I added, echoing the playful banter we had grown accustomed to. On this day, despite everything, my mother-in-law was unusually cheerful, perhaps having come to terms with her new reality. My premonition of a forthcoming peace had indeed become a reality, marking a new chapter for us.